Hey, Internet friends, it's Magic Brad with the Magic Brad Show, and I've got a new friend online here, and his name is, he's a local here, he's not just local, his name is Jesse, and the last name is Dolan. Are you there, Jesse? <laughs> I am here, Brad, thank you. Say, I was going to say a local SEO expert, but it's local SEO. You do local SEO, and you're local as an SEO expert. Yeah, it's so a local, local SEO expert, right? It's yeah, how maybe you say it's not local so. like crazy. It's local <laughs> like local in the same vicinity. You're down in Red Red Wing or Cannon Falls area. Cannon Falls is where I live out of, yeah, and the, uh, the world headquarters of our business in Cannon it Falls as well. Doesn't so. matter anymore. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. I, connect, I, I do some work with a guy over in South Africa, and I connect with some people over in Bali, Indonesia, sometimes in the UK. Yep. And the the world has gone digital, and the coronavirus kind of forced us to do that. <laughs> yeah, it's all remote now, and that's completely fine by me. So, so you uh, you're living down. How long you lived down there in Cannon Falls? Oh, I suppose we've lived in Cannon Falls. My wife and I. We've got three kids. Um, probably lived here for about fifteen or sixteen years. Um, okay, yeah, in this house that we're in, you can see on the video in the background here for probably yeah, about eleven or like, twelve years. Like a so. cabin. Maybe you're not up north. Are you up, up north there for cripes sakes? No, not not up <laughs> north. Not today. Um, it is a log. It is a log yeah. home though, so it does kind of have that kind of up north cabin vibe, which is cool. why we like it. So, I like it. I like it too. Thank you. It's good. Thank you. I'm I'm in my nerve center and headquarters. See my little magic video thing, magic thing. There? Yes, yes. I'm, I'm not gigging as much as I used to back in the old days. I've gone more digital these days, and the COVID thing forced me to get away from the event industry, and now I'm here in the online world and interviewing yep. people like you. Perfect. Love it. So let's talk a little bit about your business. It is local SEO. And I think that's really important these days because it, especially I think if a person uses SEO, this is just my opinion of SEO. I know it's a complicated thing and it's time intensive and you got to know what the hell you're doing. But if you got the right SEO, people are asking the question and that want make, they're much more apt to want to do business with you because they sought it out rather than you pushing stuff at them. Hundred percent true. Um, you know, there's a lot of people. So I'm 42 years old, right? So kind of in the SEO space, I'm actually a little bit of an older person uh, because it's just all you know, young, you know, internet marketing type stuff nowadays. Um, but I think that gives me a good perspective because um, I've been in business for about 20 years, over 20 years actually now. And when I first started um, the company I was at, we did marketing with, you know, direct mail, um, telemarketing campaigns, you know, knocking on doors and even like broadcast faxing, right? Like we'd have fax machines that would just send out faxes to other fax machines um, and things like that. And it was um, outbound marketing, right? Where we're trying to put our message in front of somebody kind of saying, Hey, next time you need this widget or gadget, think of us, please. And remember us, please. Um, things like that. And maybe, maybe, maybe catching somebody, that actually needed that product or service, you know, at that time and, and you'd get lucky there. Um, but it was a numbers game, man. You'd had to push more and more stuff out there to try to be in front of people and be, maybe pinned up in their cubicle or pinned up on their fridge, um, things like that. But with SEO and uh, when Google kind of really gained a lot of popularity in early 2000, uh, we shifted a, a lot of what we did towards the internet. And really over the next 10 or 15 years, just transformed our business, you know, not from like a, you know, Bill Gates, Microsoft type transformation, you know, being filthy rich, but more of in how we marketed, um, got rid of our um, telemarketing teams. A lot of our sales staff uh, weren't spending nearly as much money on direct mail and things like that. And it was all about, like you're saying, really being found in Google, you know, because not only does your website um, not call in sick or, or go golfing or, you know, have days off um, like your sales team or, or humans would, um, but it also gives you a different type of customer to your, your point where you started here is if somebody finds you online, they're looking for your product or service. Right. Now they've found you and you're engaging versus that other version outbound marketing where you're just praying that somebody's going to need your product or service. You catch them at the right time or you develop a relationship. So it's kind of back in the early two thousands, it started shifting to that and um, really kind of created a whole new industry of trying to be found online. Right. So, so uh, the, the world has changed a lot now that it's sort of open source and people can access anything at any time from anywhere from something they're yep. just walking around in their pocket. And the, the attitude of this new, the new consumer is, 
Don't call me, don't mail me, don't knock on my door, don't send me an email, don't send me a text. If I want something, I'll find it. Yeah. And I read, uh, I heard a guy speaking once and he said that like outbound marketing, everything is an interruption because the reality is, is the person that's on the other end is not waiting for your call. Yep. They're doing something. Even if it's going to get a cup of coffee and you call, you're an interruption. Yep. And people don't like interruptions. Whereas yep. on the SEO end of it, they're seeking something and they're, they're, uh, they're, they want the information. So they're yep. much more apt to buy. They've got money in their pocket. They're looking for that new microphone or that pair of shoes or that, uh, we'll put it into the event industry. They're looking to hire a caterer or they're looking yep. for flowers for their wedding or they need a limousine service or a DJ that's not going to use the F word. You know, they're right. seeking that out. So using the right SEO words, that's an interesting point too, because people like you, and I understand you, you people, but I don't understand the whole SEO thing myself because you have to get inside of the head of the person that's typing those words because sometimes they might make a typo and that yeah. matters. Yeah. Typo, phraseology, you know, obviously we're talking local here. Um, we serve customers all over the United States. Um, so some things that are applicable locally, let's say if we're up in the Twin Cities here, you know, maybe aren't the same down in Phoenix, you know, or Los Angeles or whatever. Cool. There's can be different slang terms, different ways to reference things. You know, um, kind of a classic example a lot of people use is up here in Minnesota, you know, maybe you'll say pop, you know, if you want a drink or down south, it's more soda. Or if you're in Texas, it's, it's, a, it's a Coke. Like it doesn't matter what it is, you want a Coke, you know, what kind of Coke do you want? You know, um, right. give me a grape, a grape soda, you know. Um, so that phraseology, what they're looking for, you know, um, could be culture, uh, can be maybe climate um, or just plain geographic references. Um, you do have to know what the people are searching for. And like we say, put yourself on the other side of that keyboard. Um, you don't want to have that, that curse of knowledge. Uh, one, one of the companies I work with um, sells printers and copiers, right? And as a good example here, within the printer and copier business, you know, you've got your copier that does copies. You've got your printer that prints out pages. And then you have this thing called a multifunction printer, which is basically a printer that also does copier functions. Most people like you and I, we don't call them multifunction printers or MFPs, right? Like I need to go, you know, shop for a new MFP for my, my yeah, business or my that. office. What does MFP mean? <laughs> right. You call that a copier, right? So if I'm the business or the business owner or the marketer of that company wanting to sell more of these multifunction printers, if my marketing and my SEO efforts are focused around that MFP or multifunction printer, and that's not what the majority of people are actually calling it or even further typing it into Google as a search, you're never going to get found, right? You have to be going after, quote, um, uh, targeting, if you will, uh, copiers, not multifunction printers. So uh, there's a lot of nuance and a lot of strategy in what you're doing for the SEO. And really a good rule of thumb, like I tell everybody, is your, your intent has to be on purpose. You know, you can't just throw stuff out there um, with what you know or what you've relied on historically or things like that, you really have to do that research about the other end of the keyboard. What are those users looking for? What are they wanting? Um, and really parse that out if you're going to have some success. Um, if you're not doing that, your competitors are, and they're the ones that are going to get found. So it's sure. it's not as easy as just throwing some keywords up there. Um, you, you do really have to think about it. And, and people are a lot more intelligent today, a lot more sophisticated. Like you said, to, to lead off, people are searching for things online. And they don't want you to call and interrupt them to sell them something. Uh, but even further now in the last five or six years, if people find something online, they don't even want to call you and ask about it even, right? They, they want to find it online, yeah. learn more about it online, compare it to other products online. They only want to call and talk to a salesperson when they absolutely have to at the very last yeah, stage. Yeah, they might not even want to talk to a salesperson. They just want to just give yeah. me the thing with the PayPal, the pay button, and I'll just buy it and just don't yeah. need to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. It's a weird if, world now. <laughs> it is. If, if they can avoid literally a, a phone call from human to human, um, people will do that. <laughs> even if it's then, less convenient, then, uh, people will do that. So. In industry spe specific, my background's in the event industry and like for my event planner expo, it was really easy for me to go onto LinkedIn because I knew the industry and I knew that, that certified meeting professionals had the acronym of CMP. So I'd go into LinkedIn, I could use that, type that in there sure. and I would find all these certified meeting professionals to come to my event. So if someone knows a specific industry, 
you can use those words. Like uh, I remember, um, like the hashtag thing has gotten so popular yep. and there's the International Live Events Association. For a while, they're using my I-L-E-A, my ILEA. Okay. So that's a word that they're actually actively seeking when they wanted to connect with these people. So that's something that you probably do as your researcher to go yep. and find, a, you know, you got to begin with the end in mind, sort of algebraically figure out what your client wants. Yep. And then you find all those little things to, to do that. And I'll give a little, in, not an endorsement, but a, a shout out to what it is that you do is in my opinion, the business owner should be busy, focused, taking care of their customers, not looking for new ones. They can hand them all over to you and let you find the new customers, then they can nurture them. Yeah. Yeah. And there is, like I said, and, and to your points, there's, there's some nuance there because um, where is that customer kind of in the sales process too, is always some kind of an interesting thing, depending on the industry, um, event planning. I could be wrong. It's not my industry. So if I make a general statement here, then I'm wrong. Um, holler at me, but I doubt somebody says, you know, next Tuesday, we're going to have an event and I need to find this stuff like right now and just boom, select it. There's some kind of research phase, fact finding, kind of, you know, paring down a list with some options. Um, so somebody, you know, if, if you're, let's say you're doing SEO and you're related to the event planning space, um, you're not going to have like a call to action or your targeting being like, you know, do your event tomorrow, do it today, like emergency event planning, whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. people are looking more long range and you, you really got to put the information out there um, that they're looking for. You know, it's not just a keyword of event planning per se, right? It's totally, um, and you and I were talking before we jumped on air, the, the scope of event planning, you know, from how small it can be to how large it can be and uh, whether it's personal or, or residential, if you will, uh, versus commercial and things like that. Um, getting into the mind really of your customer is, is part of the art um, of SEO. It's not just, you know, geeky technical stuff on a website. It's uh, really getting into some kind of sales and marketing psychology for what's the intent, you know, of, of the person searching. Um, a good example we use a lot that actually is kind of relevant to the event planning industry is if you did a Google search for wedding band and understanding the searcher intent to position your page to be found is very important in this example because a wedding band can mean, you know, a wedding band, like a, like a ring, right? Oh, uh, engagement ring or a, right. Um, or it can mean the band to play at your wedding. Totally. And yeah. if you're not like developing your page, being specific, if you're just being ambiguous about wedding band, um, I guess where I'm going to try to illustrate this is there is the layer of us people being more sophisticated. Oops, sorry about that. There is the layer of us people being more sophisticated in our searches. There's also the layer of Google with their machine learning and their artificial intelligence helping to give us what Google thinks is better results when we place this search. So as a search engine marketer or, a, or an SEO um, or even a business owner, you do have to think about what do I want to be found for? And when the people are searching for that, you know, kind of what is this intent and how does all this, how does all this come together um, along with what does Google see of this, right? Are they able to distinguish that I'm, I have a band that plays music for a wedding band versus some, I don't make some rings. Of that makes really lots of sense. I mean, that was, that was something I really didn't think about that you did because you're the expert is that concept of something like wedding band yeah. is it's possible that if you don't have your stuff optimized properly, and if you ended up using some of the similar research for doing like a pay per click thing, yep. you might be getting a bunch of pay per clicks for a wedding band versus a wedding band yep. in the car. Yep. You might be paying for all those clicks for someone that they're not looking for the ring. Yep. We already got the ring. We're looking for a musician. And if you don't you're use the right words. Absolutely right. You're, you're going to be wasting your money because um, once they click in that pay per click advertising, you don't get your money back. Like you're paying for that click, whether it was good traffic or bad. Um, in a similar way, your, your natural or organic rankings with column right down the page, not the paid ads, but the, the further down the page stuff that shows up. Um, in the same way there, if you're, you know, if you're a band, a live performance band and you're creating your page and, and somehow you're not communicating, correct, communicating correctly that you are this version of a wedding band, you're not a jeweler. If you're showing up in those searches along with jewelers and people are clicking on your website, and then clicking back out if they're bouncing, Google will see this and they, they will see that, oh, we got these guys, you know, maybe in the top or we'll say middle of the page. 
And when people click on it, they're back to our results page and looking for another option. Get enough of that happening. Google will say, well, this page is not relevant. This page is not good. Yeah, this is a bad right. result. And they want to kick it off because for, in order for Google to make money, um, they have to be the search engine we all go to. Like their number one job is to make sure that when we go to Google and search for something, we're getting relevant results back, right? Otherwise, we're, we're going to go, you know, whatever, Bing, Yahoo, or who knows what's coming up next. Um, so they have to be the number one search engine. So then people will pay for that paper click within that number one search engine, right? Yeah. So their job is constantly trying to shortcut, like, what did that guy mean or that gal mean when they typed in wedding band? What are they looking for? And if you get those bad results on the page or, or results that are not turning into good actions, um, that's how you're, you'll drop your rankings and you'll get off that page. Now, if that happened to you, if you had the wrong intent, if you're showing up under jewelry related wedding band searches when you're a music band um, and Google is seeing that and you know, kind of pushing you off the page, you're going to have a hard time uh, so showing up for anything that's relevant uh, for so what you want to be found for. So to summarize that a little bit, because this is very enlightening. That's why I love doing these video interviews like this. Cause yeah. I learned so much for free. <laughs> so it's good talking to you type people. So in that situation, if you had the thing optimized, not good like that, mm -hmm. one, you're paying more money than you need to for clicks. If, if that's what's, what ends up happening yep. Two you're getting less ranking because it's, it's a bounced page because it's not yep. relevant. So it's really important that it is search engine optimized properly. Yep. And then something else that just popped in my head is it's not just Google, but YouTube is a search engine. Uh, Pinterest yep. is a search engine. Um, Eventbrite is a search engine. All these yep. things are search and even everything's a search engine nowadays. That's Pretty what much. they do. They type it in to, to figure it out. So I can see the, the value in having you work and you're, you're wearing your shirt there. It says in tricks. Does that yeah. stand for like internet tricks? You know, uh, I'd like to say it does. And I'd like to say we were that, that kind of kitschy when we came up with the name. Um, <laughs> but it's actually a, uh, it's a, it's a Scandinavian word, uh, intric, uh, which means impression. And uh, so we came up with intrics, meaning impressions as in your website, you know, you have to give a good first impression, whether it be oh, cool to keep somebody on the page like we're talking or, you know, just looking good to kind of make that first impression because um, I think as we all know, the first impression means everything, right? That's sure. something that can't be overstated, um, but it's still very, very true. So yeah, that's what everybody kind of says is, oh, internet tricks. Yeah, and you even spelled it kind of funky and it's like, ah, oh, yeah, <laughs> not the best name if we would do it over. But, no, that's, uh, no, that's good now, like that. So. I think it's very well branded and it's you very unique and that's what you got to do. And even if that wasn't your first intention, that's what the intention is now yeah. and it, it fits. Internet it works. Tricks, and it, it works. It's in with me and my magic stuff here too. <laughs> right, right. But I do want to go back, Brad, before um, I lose this train of thought. Um, we were talking just a couple, a couple points ago about, um, kind of like the keywords, right. And the intent and, and how do you, um, how do you make it known to Google that you are a, a live wedding band and not a jeweler wedding band, right. In that same example. Um, this is a real cool trick for everybody. You're talking about doing like the keyword research and kind of figuring out what people are searching for. Um, Google, um, can show us some of that, right? So if you go out to Google right now, if you did a search for wedding band or hire a wedding band or, or things like that, whatever your search is, if you scroll to the bottom of that page, you're going to have related searches that show up under there at the bottom for Google, where Google will say people also searched for or things like that. And if you look at that, you can kind of read between the lines and get inside Google's mind, right? for what were they thinking that you just searched for. And if you see things, you know, if you're, you know, um, hire a wedding band or whatever, um, what wedding bands are available, wedding band rates, you know, just whatever kind of search terms Google's saying people also search for, mm -hmm. you're gonna wanna create content that's in that same vein right. on your page because Google's saying for this search term, we feel these other terms are related. These are, these are related search terms. And that's how you start to tell Google that you're a wedding band live, you know, performance deal and, and not a jeweler by talking about these things. Right. Google shows us what they're thinking. We get a peek inside their brain with those related searches. Um, and I actually, as a, an actual practice that we use, do a few rounds of that, right? So if, you, if you're sitting there listening to this kind of going like, how do I optimize my page? What's a quick trick? Find your top two or three search terms you think you want to be found for 
do that search we just talked about in Google, scroll down to the bottom, write down or copy and paste a few of the new terms and phrases that you see there and do multiple rounds of that same exercise. And you're gonna come up with a dozen or two of these kind of related keywords and phrases. If you're not talking about those on your web page right now, start either creating new content or rearranging your current content on there to incorporate those because that's what Google right now thinks about and how they're relating all these together. Now you don't want to type this in some weird funky way, like it, make it so humans can read it, you know, cause we still end up on the page as a result. But. Kind of what you ended up doing is taking that digital communication and putting a human factor to it because the, yeah. the two phrases would be different. It's like hire a wedding band versus buy a wedding band that kind of separates yeah. the two, two yep. things. And you have to start thinking that way. And it makes sense that you go in because the, the Google stuff is going to give you all those people also searched for, but that's not going to be perfect. And you need to go nope. in there and find that little thing and weed out the ones that aren't relevant. And that's the kind of work that your people do. And uh, absolutely. That's yep. the optimization part. <laughs> you are correct. Now you've got and another it's a constant thing that, cycle. Uh, it's constant work. <laughs> yeah. That's yep. why I think the business owner needs to focus on their customer and let someone like you focus on all this time intensive work. Cause Yes. I know that it's, I've tried doing it. And it makes me crazy sometimes because the way my Gemini brain works, sometimes it's, <laughs> it's really easy for me to go from, okay, it's a wedding band. But, but, but like, I remember once uh, I was trying to stay focused on the event world and I went to this uh, trade show is about holistic health. And they had a thing there where you can take your, your grandma that you cremated and you can embed her with the tree and you can plant the tree. So grandma's in the backyard and you can, Sure. And see grandma every year or <laughs> she's with you. And my wife says, you're supposed to stay focused on events. And I said, <laughs> well, a funeral's an event. <laughs> so my brain will justify stuff when it's going down the wrong path. So I think it's important <laughs> to have someone that can stay focused. But I, yeah. before it gets too late here, I don't want to do this too long. I wanted to uh, give you an opportunity to talk about, you've got your podcast too. So you've got intrix.com and you've yep. got your podcast. And what's the domain for that? Yeah, localseotactics.com. And we put out, not super regular, we try to do once a week, sometimes it's a few weeks in between, um, but short, uh, kind of like yours, you know, 15, 20, 30 minute episodes, um, things you can take action on and, and try to improve your rankings, so. They can just tune into that on, uh, in the, you could hook it up into your car with the Bluetooth technology these yep. days. And instead of listening to KQ, you can listen to some SEO knowledge. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, just looking at the stats for our podcast, uh, once COVID hit, you know, in March, it was, it was pretty interesting. You could tell people weren't driving to and from work anymore, which is where a lot of our audience, and they tell us that, you know, this is great on the way into work and whatnot, you know, short episodes that can digest it. Um, boy, for about two or three months, our, our episodes just cut in half for volumes because nobody was, nobody was doing that anymore, right? We were at home refinishing our basement or, you know, building some project or something instead of instead of learning things like that. Well, that's so. another reason why you have to have the human element and all this stuff when you're doing this stuff. So you can pivot and shift gears and you can yeah. do that rather than letting the, mach the robot keep on going. It's like a, the Roomba is doing your, your uh, carpet and bump, bumping against the wall because there's a flaw in the Right. <laughs> Got to have the human factor in this stuff. Well, let's uh, shut this down, Jesse, and we'll move on to... Um, getting it beamed up to the universe so people can find it. Is there any yeah. other words of wisdom you want to part with before we uh, sign off? Yeah, I'd say something uh, a lot of people ask me like, okay, so what's like the one thing I should do, right? Kind of distilling it down to that. And I kind of mentioned it earlier, but um, everything has to be done with intent. Um, basically, if you want to be found for red balloons in a search, if you're not talking about red balloons on your website or a web page within your website, you have no chance. Um, because your competitors are doing that. Somebody's already taken, taken it to that level. Um, so if you're sitting there thinking, I want to be found online, make a list of the things you want to be found for and make darn sure that those things are being talked about on your website. Um, and that's like the root level. After that, you get more advanced, kind of finding these related terms like we were talking and, and a host of other strategies. Um, but bar none, you've got to start with, put the content out there, put the words on the page, that the things you want to be found for. Um, otherwise, you just have no chance. So, Well, that reminded me of a story, and it's pretty much non-related to any of this other than business. But uh, when you mentioned the red balloon, um, there was a book called Guerrilla Marketing. Oh, yeah. That? 
And there was a story in there, I believe it was in the book or if it was someone who talked about it, it was called the Big Blue Balloon Story. Do you remember that? I don't remember it offhand, but that's probably where I got the whole balloon thing from because I had read the book. It's been a couple of years, but. Well, this is a pretty, it's an interesting tactic. It's kind of cold blooded, but it's very effective. Um, there was a furniture store and what this guy did was invested a bunch of money into radio and TV and circulars and magazine ads and direct mail about the big blue balloon sale this Saturday. His competitor across the street the day before went and rented a bigger blue balloon and put it up on his roof. <laughs> <laughs> so, strategy. Yeah. Whatever well, Jesse, it takes. I appreciate, you, I appreciate you taking the time to be Absolutely. with me today and maybe uh, down the road we'll do some more stuff. If you want to stick on, we'll have a little conversation. Other than that, I'm going to close this off and beam Sounds it up good. to the universe for people to find. Super. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for having me. Peace. Take care.